you got to ride in something. So it's so funny. So I was shopping for a car. I, when I bought the Mustang, everybody said, oh, you should have gotten Audi. That's the one with all, this, all the bells and whistles, all the technology. When I bought the Audi, everybody said, oh, no, no, no. You should have got the Tesla. That's the one with all the bells and whistles. Now that I've ordered a Tesla, everybody says I should get an Arkimoto. SRK, that's the future. You got to drive one. Tell us about it. Well, you know, we're talking about a commuter vehicle, and we've seen a lot of those. CES was packed with them, everything from scooters to skateboards. Actually, Karsten fell off of one, which was fun. Uh, ah. We didn't get that on film. Uh, but this is sort of a genre breaker because you've always had the really expensive electric vehicle that could drive on the freeway, or you've had the really inexpensive vehicle that could only drive in the city. This is a city vehicle that can also drive highway speeds. Uh, you can get this thing up to 80 miles an hour. You can get yourself 70 or 120 miles of range, depending on the battery options. It is a three-wheeler, but it's incredibly stable. This thing was actually smooth, way smoother than I expected. Let's take a look. The Arkimoto SRK. Now, the future of automotive technology is electric. From the supercar down to the commuter barge, everyone's trying to figure out a way to work electronics, smart electronics, and an electric drivetrain into their vehicle. But why is that future so unaffordable? From the Tesla supercar down to something like the Nissan Leaf, it all starts between 30 to 60 and up. But what if I said I could get you an electric vehicle that could do highway speeds, that could get you to and from work, and it only cost you about 11.9? Well, that's what we've got with the SRK. I'm speaking with Mark from Arkimoto, who's going to explain why they think the SRK is your electric vehicle. Mark, what is the SRK? So the SRK is an ultra-efficient three-wheeled electric motorcycle designed for daily driving. Arkimoto's mission is sustainable transportation. In order to do that, we got to have a product that people can actually afford. So what we said is we don't want to necessarily make an electric car. What we want to build is an electric vehicle that solves the same set of problems that you use a car to solve every single day, whether you're going to work, going to school, going to the grocery store, carries two people, gets up to full speed, carries some extra stuff, protects you from the elements. Very, very fun to drive. It's got a zero to 60 in seven and a half seconds, plenty of range. So your average American driver's doing 33 miles a day. Our base model will go 70. And then if you're in a larger metro area like the Bay Area, you can get a longer range battery that'll go 130 miles on a charge. Oh, we've seen a division in EVs. We go down from sort of the inner city EVs that do scooters and, and you know they're not designed for highway speeds they're not really designed for highway safety and then you've got those cars that are designed for the highways but they again start at thirty thousand dollars you've hit a sweet spot this is a highway a freeway speed capable vehicle but you're starting at that lower price point how how do you do that well it's you know and that's there really there's a sort of a giant gap between the scooter bicycle motorcycle class of vehicles where you have you know, certainly very efficient, low cost, uh, but also just completely unprotected. It can fall over and so on. All, and then there are full-size cars that are 4,000 pounds of material to carry, well, on a good day, 200 pounds a person down the road. So the choice is either you have something that's just sort of uh, doesn't have the capabilities you want, or you have something where you're carrying 20 times your own body weight just in order to get a bag of groceries. And we looked at that and said, hey, what can we build that's in that gap between those two things? How can we blend the efficiency of the electric scooter, the electric motorcycle with the capabilities that you actually need as a daily driver? So one of the cool things we did with the SRK is we have actually a dual motor electric front wheel drive. It is a three wheel vehicle, two wheels in front, one wheel in back, but each of those two front wheels is independently powered. That lets us basically do the differential in software. The battery system runs the length of the vehicle, it's what you actually sit astride, and we have both a 70 mile and 130 mile battery options. Again, zero to 60 in seven and a half seconds, which is super fun, but it also gives you that maneuverability that you want in heavy traffic. You can easily make lane changes that you want to make. You have a ton of visibility out the side, so it's, it's very easy to maneuver. Mark, why is it so difficult to design an electric vehicle? Because there are a lot of companies that have started up and failed, even big companies that have tried certain vehicles that just didn't catch on. Why is this space so competitive? Well, I, I think part of the challenge, one, is that you have an energy source that has about 1 25th of the energy density of gasoline. And so you have a, an entire industry that has been building products 
on one set of assumptions now moving to an entirely different set of assumptions. And also, uh, the, the living and behavior patterns of people have changed over the hundred years that we've had the internal combustion engine. We had a, a largely rural agrarian society, now we have a very urban society. And so, the, the, both the product topology as well as just our sensibility about the pending threat of global warming and uh, resource scarcity and so on, all of those are driving us in a very different direction, but I think uh, it's, it's, it's a sort of a slow to move space. Mark, thank you very much for sharing the technology with us. I'm sure our audience is, is going to love to check this out, an actual affordable EV that they can take everywhere. Uh, who knew? Uh, if they wanted to find out more about Arkimoto, more about the SRK, more about when this might be available, because I understand you're, you're still clearing a few regulatory hurdles, when will it be available and where can they go to find out more information? We're targeting production for the end of this year. You can go to our website, Arkimoto, A-R-C-I-M-O-T-O.com. You can put in a nominal deposit to reserve a place in our first production fleet. Ah! You <laughs> Only cool people have cameras on their heads. I'm, so, I'm telling you. So the funny thing is, uh, it, so that is street legal. That is street legal. And the funny thing is, it, it, driving around in San Francisco in that, you just look like the other tourists who are yes. driving the little, basically, motorcycles with fairings. They have the same exact look, right? But I can get on the highway. That's the difference. I can cross the Golden Gate Bridge. But would you? I actually would. Uh, this, if, if you've ever ridden a motorcycle... This is actually, it feels much more comfortable and much safer yeah. than a motorcycle. It has yeah. a roll cage. I, you know, it has seat belts. So right. is it as safe as, in, you know, cocooning yourself in four tons of metal? No. But it also it's goes places cool. you can't get with a four-ton car. It's, so it's the regulatory hurdles that are keeping them from selling it today? Uh, sort of. I mean, anytime you put a car on the freeway, freeway yeah, and this is why so many vehicles are only in city, right. you have to go through all the crash right. testing and all the regulatory right. hurdles. But the technology is there. It's all working. It's, they're, they're not doing anything on this that's completely out of the ordinary. So we know it works. Now they just have to get it all licensed. I think a lot of, uh, that's really what's holding back a lot of electric yeah. And autonomous stuff is, uh, this is all so new, and, and Silicon Valley moves so fast compared to government, as it should be, because mm -hmm. like, you want these to be safe before the, the government approval. Yeah. And, there and you 70 go. to 120 mile range, that's, that's that gets really rid of range cool. anxiety. Yeah. yeah, at 250 miles on the Tesla, I mean, that's okay, I can get to the airport and back, but I wouldn't want to take it on a road trip. Exactly. And that they try to fix that with superchargers, and maybe that helps.